Season two begins here on ESPN Plus. It'll be Mariel Charneski versus Roberto Sabad in the women's lightweight division. Three five minute rounds. The first time ever the women's lightweights will crown a champion in major mixed martial arts. Very much looking forward to this one. And there's Morielle Charneski right there. We saw her last year. Yeah, Randy only Couture. fitting. Only fitting. We should start this new season with who we ended with the last season. She she fought Kayla Harrison in the New Year's Eve special. She did a great job at a great showing for herself. It didn't go that well for her, but you know she's got three wins all by knockout. She's got great power. She gets a chance to get in there and get it done. Then Wisconsin native. It was homeschooled. Started Taekwondo at 19 to get in shape and meet boys. <laughs> uh, fell in love quickly uh, with MMA, and here she is. And her opponent, formidable, but it's been a while since we've seen Roberta Samad in mixed martial arts action, Eve. It has been a while. She's 4-1, and one, and all four of those wins came in the first round. But like you said, it's been a while. It's been three and a half years. She's, been, she's had a layoff because she became a mother, but now that her daughter Alana is two years old, she's ready to get back in there and start competing again. You know, she has the support of her family. Her husband's in her corner. He's a professional fighter also. And she met him when he came down to Brazil to train. He came to her gym. She beat him up. So we know who's the world champion <laughs> of that house, right? <laughs> the sport bringing families together. We'll take a look at our Presidente tale of the tape for this, our first women's lightweight matchup. Look, there's a lot of similarities between these two women. Not a distinct physical advantage anywhere to be found. No, there's not. We'll take it inside of our PFL cage and get season two started with Lillian Garcia. Good evening, fight fans! It is time to go Welcome to the NYCB Live home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum for the 2019 kickoff of the Professional Fighters League. Ladies and gentlemen, the pursuit for the world titles and the $1 million awarded in each division starts here. And once again, the PFL is making history as we debut the first ever 155 pound women's division. So now, get ready because history is in the making as this is scheduled for three rounds and it is in the women's light heavyweight division. Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner, she specializes in jiu-jitsu. Standing at five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in officially at 154 pounds. In five professional bouts, her record is four victories and one defeat. Representing Brazil, fighting out of Cincinnati, Ohio, here is Alberta. And her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Her background is in wrestling. She stands at five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in officially at 155 pounds. In eight professional bouts, she has a record of three victories and five defeats. Fighting out of Austin, Texas, here is Morial, the Machine Charnetsky. And your referee in charge is Brian Miner. Let's get season two going here in Long Island. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture, Eve Edwards cage side, and the women's lightweights will get us started tonight. There's Roberta Samad. Ready? 10 point must Ready? system based on aggression and control you MMA fans are familiar with. No elbows at any time in PFL. Moriel Charneski takes the center of the cage and tries a right hand to get us started. A couple of jabs from Charneski in the gray shorts. She's looking to establish her range, but, but uh, Samad looks like she's already got it down. Alberto Samad grabs that body lock and walks Charneski back into the cage, Randy. This is a good spot for her. Double underhooks, controlling the tie, and trapping Charneski against the cage to see what she can do from here. 
And we wondered what Samad's strategy was going to be. It's been a long time, as we mentioned, since she's been in the cage. It's been almost five years, Eve, since she got a win. This is a conservative approach for a jiu-jitsu specialist, and I kind of expected that. I, I believe that's what I was expecting also, uh, and it's, this is exactly what I believe she wants. She wants to get this fight to the mat. She looks to be the bigger woman when they're tied up, so let's see how she's able to use that size to her advantage right here. Charneski on the bottom with a closed guard and double overhook. She lets one of those overhooks go and tries to get to work with an open guard. Roberto Samad in the red on top, testing some ground and pound here. That head control is going to be key. I mean, she's got to keep Samad's head down. If she doesn't want to get hit, that's she's not going to have the, the range to land big punches. But holding the head down is going to prevent Charneski from being able to get back to her feet, especially with that closed guard. Randy, you've been in this top position many, many times in your career, and for the, the person on bottom, it's a balancing act between finding the right spots to go and get up versus taking that damage and, you know, avoiding that damage, I guess, by, by controlling the person on top with head control and things like that. Charneski's doing a nice job of moving her hips from side to side and being, being hard to pin down. Samad needs to use her hips more, saddle in, and... and, and, and stack in against Charneski so that she can posture up and land better shots. You saw in that scramble there, Moriel Charneski tried to make something happen, still on her back, but she's got Roberta Samad's leg trapped and is trying to roll over into a more advantageous position here. I feel like Samad has, has some control here. What she needs to do is drive with her hips, drive her left leg down the way her feet are trapped, and as she does that, she can push with her right hand on Charneski's left knee and step over to the mount. But now, right now, it looks like she's she's working for a key lock on the calf, or maybe an isolation to a knee bar. It's hard to tell. They're so tangled up. Yeah, she can't she can't attack that leg though. Now she's he's looking to go right. to her. Uh oh, right she, oh there's, oh, a, there's trouble. A calf Fasha. crush. Finaliza, tag it. Samad attempting to extend that. I guess that's the left leg of Moriel Charneski. Charneski doing a great job of keeping her ankles crossed and everything together. Don't let, against a jiu-jitsu specialist, don't let anything get out there by itself. No, but she's going to call that, that the Indian, Indian death lock, the crossed ankles there. That in, in wrestling, we've caught her laced ankles, and it can put a lot of pressure on the calf. She's got a toe hold on top of that. Toe hold attempt here by Roberto Samad. Charneski not tapping. And what Samad needs to do with that toe hold is she wraps it up again. No, she's not going to attack it, so we're not going to worry about that. She's looking for that knee bar, but she's not facing the knee. Samad is not facing the knee. She needs to get her hips pointing the opposite direction of that knee so that, that Charneski's knees pointed directly at Samad's hips. Now she's looking to tie both those legs up. She can attack with a heel hook, but attacking that bottom leg is going to be the tricky one. She wants to go after the top leg. Samad wants to attack that top leg, not the bottom leg. She can get the bottom, Samad can get the bottom leg, but the top leg is going to be the easier one to attack. So a grappling exchange here four minutes in to round number one. And remember, it's all about points in PFL. You get bonuses for early finishes. It looks like we might be in for a bit of a grind, at least through round one, with Moriel Charneski on bottom and Roberto Samad controlling from the top for the majority of this round. What I like to see Samad do is pick her right knee up right here, because if you look at Charneski's lock, if Samad picks her right knee up, that lock is going to break, and she's going to have an opportunity to pass. She missed it. Now she's trapped in the half guard. Samad. Attempting a few more significant strikes from the top there. Charneski doing a good job of avoiding any significant damage here. Almost an elbow there from Roberto Samad. Back in 60 seconds for round two. Two begins here at PFL Season 2, Episode 1, getting you started in the women's lightweight division. There's Moriel Charneski in the gray shorts, Roberta Samad, who dominated round one in the ring. 
Charneski needs to get off on the striking. We saw I have a problem on the ground on her back in the first round, so she should take advantage of being in this position right now. Try to open up with her striking. It's a nice slip, inside slip, and a body shot from Roberta Samad countering Oriel Charneski there. Roberta's got great head movement. Noticed in the, in the break, Roberta chose not to sit on the stool. She stayed standing. You see a lot of athletes, especially well-conditioned athletes, who will do that. They don't like their heart rate dipping as much getting back into that second round. And Randy, when you say conditioned athletes, remember, Charneski took this fight on about a week's notice. And look, she looks to be slowing down a little while Samad looks strong. She looks the same as she did in the first round. Charneski looks to be a little bit slower. You always wonder, after a long layoff like Roberta Samad had, whether she's going to be sharp. Doesn't look like there's a lot of ring rust for her. Great head movement, those leg kicks are scoring, and the jab has landed several times on Mario Charneski's nose. Well, she told us she'd been she'd been training. She'd been looking for a fight. She did try out for the Ultimate Fighter, and it, so you know she's been working at it. And that's the way you keep ring rust away. You stay in the gym. You keep working hard. Your timing's not going to be exactly as it would it would be if you were still competing. But it's quick to get it back when you stay on top of things. Charneski said she got the call a, a week and a half ago, but she had been training and in, in the hunt for a fight. She was happy to be with the PFL because. The next few months are lined out for her. She knows where she's going to be competing. Well, if you're, if you're watching us on ESPN Plus, you can see next to the clock down at the bottom there the uh, Cajunomics numbers. Roberta Samad, very efficient in her strikes, landing 20 out of 33 attempts and four out of four leg strikes right now. Those low kicks are landing. Another nice jab from Roberta Samad in the red. She looks to be, Samad looks to be very comfortable in there. Another great jab from Samad. Impressive control of the striking exchanges for someone who comes in as a jiu-jitsu specialist. Another oh, big hand right hand by Samad. Samad's really feeling it now. Roberta Samad's trying, she's starting to find her range. High, low attacks, really keeping Cherneski off, off balance. What I'd like to see Samad do is use that right hand a bit more, though. She's landing her straight shot, she's landing her jab, but the power is in that right hand. She follows that up with something after that. She'll be able oh, to big head kick. Do something like that. <laughs> and you saw she attempted it. There it is again. Right hand, high kick with the left leg. And an uppercut hook combination lands for Roberto Samad. There's the double leg attempt. Switches to the single. And here she is again pushing Moriel Charneski against the cage. We saw this end in a takedown in round one for Roberto Samad. Can she get Charneski down and secure the round? Take a look inside the blue corner. Evan Samad, Roberto's husband, who's also a fighter. Good underhooks and control there by Moriel Cherneski to try and get herself off of the cage. There is Samad's corner. Grabs that single leg, Randy, and dumps Moriel Cherneski right to her back. Lands in side control, Eve. But Cherneski's doing exactly what she needs, but she's taking it out. Cherneski was in the perfect position. She had her left hand underneath. Full mount now. Full mount. This could be a big problem for Cherneski. A minute and 15 seconds left in round number two here. Still five points potentially for Roberta Samad. Climbing up looks like she's going to maybe attempt an arm bar here. Now this defense is this, this defense coming out of Chineski right now from the bottom is not the best. You got to put your hips down and bump them. Lifting your hip, your legs to the to the air is not going to help get your opponent off balance. Sumat's got the back now, she's looking for that final anchor. She's got one anchor in, one hook in, but looking to secure that second. There's the second hook there. Looking for the climb back up in the mount. Back onto the mount is Roberta Samad. She's looking Arm for triangles there. 30 seconds left. She missed it. But looking to isolate the arm there for that Americana. They switch to the arm bar here. You see her working the bottom leg up. Charneski Wiley doing a good job. Staying active down there. Charneski's got to bring her elbows in and walk Samad back down to her hips so that when she bumps her hips, Charneski moves tent. back for the armbar, arm but does tent. not have the head isolated. It's been all over to Samad so far. Can Charneski turn the tables in round three? We find out in one minute.
Welcome back to NYCB Live and Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Here's some replays from round two as Hoberta Samad really started to find her own range in the striking game. Nice one two lands there. And this, I think we might see her try it a couple more times, Randy. She set up that high kick with a right hand. Came very close to landing twice on Moriel Charneski. Definitely have it uh, two rounds to nil Good. for three. Roberta Samad. Charneski has really got to make something significant happen in this round to get back in this fight. Has an opportunity to turn the tables here, but of note, Oriel Charneski 0 for 4 in fights that go past the second round in her career. And here's the thing where Charneski's concerned. She knows, she has to know that she's down. So the pressure to put, to put, to get a finish right now has to be on her. But at the same time, she gets that finish. She does get that bonus point. She'll walk out of here with four points. It was that high, high kick attempt again by Samad. Aggression here for Moriel Charneski. She knows the situation she's in. That's good cornering and good awareness from a fighter. Oh, nice, nice uppercut, uppercut left hook. hook. Alberto Samad showing impressive striking and striking defense. I would like to see Samad, though, put, more com put bigger combinations together. She's throwing ones and twos. Ah, that's low kick. The threes and fours would really There's help. the high kick again. Alberto Samad mixing it up with the strikes here. And it's always interesting to see a fighter who knows they're in control after two rounds. With the point system in PFL, do you push for the finish or do you coast your way to a victory, sacrificing one point? Huge slip and a hook there by Homerta Samad. Very, very impressive head movement by Roberta, Roberta Samad. Nice Elusive. right hand and another hook from Roberta Samad. She makes you miss and she makes you pay. She does that really well. She's comfortable in there. And this may be a little bit of ring rust just because she's not putting the pressure on knowing the fact that she can get bonus points. But she is winning the fight and she's comfortable. Samad is who I'm talking about. Impressive showing. Nearly wow. five years removed from her last win. That beautiful leg kick scoring. That's about... 12 out of 16 of those that landed, Randy. Another hook from Samad as well. Starting to find a home for that. That was a low calf kick. Those, those are the worst thing ever. And Samad is finding the, the, the home for that hook off of a lot of counters now also. I'm partial to that left hook. <laughs> nice jab from Samad. Ooh, body Beautiful kick. body kick. Straight and to the right hand. And Eve, it looks like she's setting up all those kicks with a, at least a feint from her right hand first. Yeah, it, that's exactly what Samad needs to do. Set up some feints, put some Single combinations leg it in. together, and she'll have Goes to the off. waist, looking for the tackle. There, there it, is. it is. Good position. And right to north-south here, can Hoberta Samad isolate the arm? Moriel Charneski has been pretty adept at showing jujitsu defense, even from the bottom. How effective are those strikes from the bottom? Milton zero. Uh, you, she's got to find a position right now. She's got to fight the position. Take that right arm of hers, punch that underneath so Samad's left arm, armpit, and start to fight it's together. A full mount, Otherwise, this arm is triangle. Charneski's going to give up her back. She's got to be very, very careful here. Here's an arm transition bar to the arm bar again. Lots she of couldn't time. Get the head triangle now. Last time. But she triangle has more time now. She's now. got triangle now. Adjusting again. What Samad needs to do here is use that forearm and push Charneski's face away, but keep that arm trapped just to get that leg clear above the arm, above the head so she can put pressure on that elbow with the arm bar attempt. Oriel Charneski trying to force the head back in, give that arm a little bit of help. She's got to use that forearm as a pry and keep turning her body, but now she's squaring back up, she's going to lose the arm bar. Is she... Charneski now with Samad's back. back. Samad bailed on the on the armbar attempt and created a scramble, but didn't explode up hard enough. Nice job by Samad to get out of trouble. And now the exchange continues, and Hoberto Samad about to take the back of Moriel Charneski's. Samad in the red, Charneski in the gray and black. It's been all Samad so far as Moriel Charneski finds herself on the bottom, and Samad working to a mount for I think the fourth time in this fight. 
Only 40 seconds left for Moriel Charneski to try and make something happen as Alberto Samad appears to have come back with a successful long layoff return. Right now, Charneski, she's attacking that arm and that's not gonna help her. She's gotta get herself out of this position so that she can get in a position that she, so that Charneski can attack and look for a finish because she needs one. Full Even mount again. Full mount again. Mod. And what, what's the first step in getting out of this mount? In the mount, she needs, Charneski needs to keep her elbows tight and bump her hips so she can get one leg and create some space between her body and Samad's legs to get to that half guard position at least. And that'll do it in our first women's lightweight season two bout. Roberta Samad appears to have done everything she needed to do to get three points and a victory over Moriel Charneski. A testament to Moriel Charneski, she told us she had been preparing, did not have a fight officially until about nine days ago. And she said she'd been at the gym. She did not gas in this fight. She was fighting just... Moriel Charneski was not more than her night. Roberto Samad uh, was the better fighter this evening. There's that upper set and hook yeah. from Roberto Samad. Really, really nice. She moves her head really well. Slip, comes right up with the left hook, right on the button. Single leg, finishes to the waist. There's the change of direction and the tackle right in a good position. Here's a reversal. Charneski gets on the back of Roberto Samad here. Doesn't last long. She gets a bit too eager and attacks a little too quick. But she was also short on time. Impressive showing by Roberto Saban. I keep hammering this home, but it's not easy to come back into the cage after three and five and years, years yeah. since your last win, three and a half since your last fight. Here's our final cage genomics, and really this is all Roberto Saban. Three takedowns, transition to mount several times, efficient in her ground strikes, Incredible leg strike accuracy. And for a jiu-jitsu specialist, her punches were landed. We've got an official decision inside the cage with Lillian Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored the bout 30-27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, earning three points in the women's lightweight division, here is your winner, Alberta Sama. Three points awarded. We talk about how important these points are. You only get into the playoffs with points. Roberta Samad grabs three in her first bout, and she's inside of our cage with Caroline Pierce. Roberta, your first fight now in a couple of years since having your little girl, and your emotional, I can see that. Just put into words what this win means to you and the three point. Yeah, oh my God, I try to do my best. That's my first time since I have a baby three years ago, so. Yeah, I'm a little nervous, but I guess I made it. You did indeed. Look, it didn't look like there was any ring rust. You were really trying to go for the submission finishes, those head kicks as well in the second round. Were you surprised that you couldn't put her away? Uh, I, I work hard on my stand-up with my coaches. Thank God I have these guys in my life. Robbie Bradford and, and my almost father, Scott Wagman. So they work on my, my hands. I've been training, training my camp since I have a baby, so I guess I'm totally comfortable in my stand-up right now and try to take it out in the last round because my card is a little bit <laughs> just too nervous, but I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad you fairly believe in me, and I'm, I'm ready for the next. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you won't have to wait a few years to fight again. You'll be back very soon. But tell us, you are the first women's fight in this new women's lightweight division. What does that mean to you and being here on ESPN? Oh my God, this is incredible. I think it best I have the best idea bringing this woman. All the girls here is so strong and so talented. So I'm glad, just glad to be here. Well, a huge congratulations to you. Congratulations. Back to you, Sean.
What you wanna do? If you don't strike first, that's when they gon' come at you. Yeah. And you know it's true. Don't let your life get worse. Being timid, that ain't cool. Nah, you gotta wait.